Okay, page 61, we're in the middle, middle of chapter 3. We're learning about the different, the first stage of to be successful in our Vodas Hashem is Zihirus, or vigilance. So we were discussing the way to do that is uh, contemplation, contemplation, and Nefesh. We have to sit and think, one, what does Hashem want for us? And two, how do we achieve what Hashem wants for us? Meaning, what is the good? What is good? And do our actions match up to what is the good? And we mentioned that thinking, sitting and thinking is very uh, vital to that. And contemplating. And the Eight Sahara, since it's such an important thing, the evil inclination, the Eight Sahara tries to get us distracted from that, that we're so busy with work and with other things that we have no time to just uh, sit and think. And that's a very, very important thing. The most important thing is just to sit and think. One, what does Hashem want for me? And two, am I living up to what Hashem wants? So let's start on page 61 and continue. Ach. Those who have, we, we also we mentioned also that we are um, in the grips of the eight Sahara, the evil inclination. That since we're we're in this physical world, and if we don't have guidance in the proper path, we're really just blind people in a world of darkness where we'll stumble and we won't even know what uh, we are about to encounter. And he says, worse than that that sometimes we think what's good is evil and what's evil is good. And unless we have somebody who's already come out of this darkness, then we're hopeless. We have to trust those who have already come out of the darkness. And who is that? Those are the rabbis. Those are Chazal, the teachers who have already perfected their character to a certain extent. And uh, we have to take their advice. So those who have already come out of this, this, um, this, um, call it the, the shackles, he says, the prison of, the, of, of this world, we have to take their advice. What is this like? It's like uh, a corn maze. It's a certain garden. They used to have these in the Ramchal's times also. It's a certain garden that's planted for enjoyment. The, I guess the, the princes used to have these during, the, uh, during his time. The walls, the, the um, vegetation, you had different... Um, shrubbery that made walls. It was like a maze, right? Just like you have a corn maze, they had the same type of maze made out of uh, bushes. And there were many paths, different paths that could, uh, that were mixed up. They all looked the same. So you had this maze, and the, the idea was you want to get to the, uh, the center of the maze, right? I think now the corn maze has a word. You start in the middle and you go out. I don't know. But uh, in these mazes, the, the corn mazes. <coughs> uh, oh, so corn mazes, bismanazeh, you start on one side and the other. But back in the day of the Ramchal, the corn mazes, you start on the outside and you go in the middle. That was the goal. Okay, interesting. To research the history of corn mazes. Ramnam, Hashvilim, and they weren't even made out of corn then, they were made out of bushes. Ramnam, Hashvilim ha'ilem, mehem yisharim magim ha'emes alachsandra. Some of these pathways, they are straight and they'll get you to the middle part. Umehem. And some of these paths, they will mislead a person and they will make him go further from the middle. When you're actually in the maze, you don't know if you're taking the right path or not. Because they all look the same and somebody who's looking at them can't tell the difference. The only way you can know the difference between these different paths is if you already went through this maze and you already made it to the center, if you already succeeded in the maze, then you could sort of recognize that, oh, this is the right path, this is the wrong path, just from recognizing where you are. Only somebody who has already completed the path, and he's in the middle, I think they used to have a raised platform, they would like go up, so if you're in the middle, you could look down, and you could guide the people that are still in the maze what the, what the right way is to go. But somebody in the maze has no idea if he's taking the right path or the wrong path, because they all look the same. And now somebody who trusts, you have a person who's in the middle of the path, and he's yelling, 
down to the person. No, make a left, make a right. So if you trust the guy who's giving you directions, you're going to be successful and you're going to get to the, uh, the goal. But if you don't trust them, then you're lost. But someone who just trusts himself in the middle of this maze, he is never going to get to the uh, end. So to Misha, Dain Lomash will be Yitzro. Us, us folks who were still under the control of our Yitzhar, of the evil inclination. We are in the middle of the maze. We can't discern between what's right and what's wrong. What the right path is and the wrong path. But somebody who has already completed the maze and he stands in the middle, he knows what the right way is. And it's up to us to listen to that person who already completed the maze and he's already in the center, and he's been successful, and he's come out of the bonds of his Yetzirah. So he's yelling to us. They're yelling to us what the right path is, and it's up to us if we want to listen to them or not. Now, obviously, what's the... Uh, the mashal is obvious, that he's talking about the sages and the rabbis, that they direct us, and they tell us what the right way is, right? There's a general um, thing that the rabbis tell us. We look in the. T- he's going to say what what is exactly here in this case that the rabbis tell us to do. Right? We have Chazal. We have the ge- the Gemara, the Midrashim, everything to in our Masorah, our tradition to teach us what does Hashem want for us from us. And when we go in that path, that is when that's like listening to the guy who's in the middle of the maze, who's already completed the maze, telling us how to get there. But it also happens on a uh, a more specific level that in life, when you want to know. When we want to know what the best thing is to do, right? What does Hashem want from us in our particular situation? We go to great rabbis and we ask them, which makes a lot of sense. Just like if you have a medical issue, you go to a doctor who is an expert in medicine. So too, if you have an issue in life and you want to know what the Torah says about this specific issue and how to... uh, how to deal with it, you go to an expert in Torah, a person who spent his entire life studying Torah, and all of his decisions are based on what the Torah wants and what Hashem wants. So obviously it makes sense. That's what's something called Das Torah. You go to a big, it's not a, it's not a magical thing, like you go to a Rebbe and he gives you a blessing and uh, magically the bright thing is going to happen. It's not like that. It's You go to a, a rabbi who spent his entire life studying Torah, and uh, he's an expert in it, and he's going to guide you based on what uh, Hashem, uh, Hashem wants from you. Okay, so now, now that he's saying we have to trust the rabbis who have already come out of the Yitzhahara and to be successful in serving Hashem, what do they tell us? So what is this advice that the rabbis tell us that if we want to be successful in serving Hashem and that without it, we, it's impossible for us to have success? What do they tell us? What do they tell us to do, the rabbis? Do a cheshbon and nefesh, to sit and think. To think about what does Hashem want from us, and are we meeting those standards. That is the only way, nothing else, that's the only way that we can be successful in serving Hashem. So he has this whole uh, parable about the corn maze type of thing, and someone's yelling at us and screaming, do this, this is the only way you're going to get to the middle of the maze, this is the only way you're going to get out of the maze. And the rabbis are screaming at us, telling us, what's the one way and there's nothing else? Chesh nefesh, to sit and think, what does Hashem want from us? Two, are, is what we're doing living up to what Hashem wants? I just, I saw, um, well, let's, let's finish this chapter first. Klo davar the general principle. A person has to always be thinking. One, he has to think all times. Two, he has to set aside to think. So it's not just, to, it's not just enough to think sometimes. You actually have to set up a time to think. You know, maybe it's before we go to bed, five minutes before we go to bed to think, or when we get up, or we're on the bus, or we're driving home from work, but there has to be a set time. It's not enough to just say, oh yeah, I'm going to think about it, because we all know if we don't put a set time, we're actually not going to do it. And what do we think about during this set time? What is the true way, the true path that the Torah wants us to go? And two, we have to think, the way that I'm going, is it living up? Is it according to that standard that the Torah wants me to go? And through that contemplation, we will be able to protect ourselves from going in any evil way. Like the... Like the Pasuk says, Pali Smaga Raglecha Vahadrachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachach
all, um, all your ways will be proper. And it says that we have to look through our ways and uh, then we will return to Hashem. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting, the Matnas Chalko from Ramad Yisrael Solomon says we should all go to a corn maze to just like really experience the, the, the parable here. So if we want to take a Masil Shasharm field trip, maybe mm-hmm. you, could, you could organize that to go to a corn maze. But uh, no, but the, um, the parable is very true. He's saying that Chazal, the rabbis, are telling us the one way, they're giving us advice, the one way to be successful in the vote is Hashem, to serve God, is to do a cheshbon and nefesh, to sit and think, one, what does the Torah want from us? And two, are we living up to uh, what the Torah says? Now, how do we know what the Torah wants from us? So it's very simple. We have to learn. We have to study. Right? It says, Lo amar chasid, uh, an ignorant person cannot be pious. Right? You have a... Uh, Certain people think that you don't have to know anything to be a pious person. That's not true. You have to know what the laws are. We have to, we have to study and little by little and, and do as much as we can. And that's actually going to come up a little bit in the next chapter. Let's, uh, let's start uh, chapter 4, Parak Dalit. So now we were learning about the parts of, Z- of Zahirus, of being vigilant, of not faltering from our service of Hashem. Now this chapter is going to be how do we acquire, how do we get ourselves to the point where we have this attribute of Zahirus, of vigilance. Hine, any quote before we start? Any questions so far? Good. Hine, Ma Shemevi Asa Adam Al Darach Klal Ela Zahirus, who Limura Torah. What brings us to Zahirus watchfulness is the study of Torah. There you go. To come to this level of watching our deeds, that where everything that we do is to serve Hashem. The way that we get there is by studying Torah. I just saw in the Derech Chaim, which is also written by the Ramchal, this is in the last chapter of Derech Chaim, but it's not clear that he wrote the last chapter, I think. He says that there is nothing that weakens the Sitra Achra like learning Torah. The Sitra Achra is like the Satan or the Yitzhahara, the evil inclination that we have. We have a, a natural, there's an a impure spiritual, in addition to the physical body that we have that naturally desires food and uh, physical desires and whatnot, there's also a spiritual force of impurity, of evil, that tries to get us to sin. The, what's the way to weaken it? The strongest way to weaken it is to study Torah. That's the way to do it. Now, um, right, Rabbi Franz said it to see Mashas. He wrote that it, he's not exactly clear how it works by learning Torah, but it works. When a person learns Torah, he has a strong desire to get closer to Hashem. And it purifies him, and it weakens this evil desire. I, I mentioned the story before, I think. My, uh, my reshiva, Rabbi Feldman, was um, the reshiva in Or Sameach, which is a yeshiva for people that were not religious. And Rav Simcha Wasserman, who was a big reshiva, he asked Rabbi Feldman to send him some students to learn with him, to study with him. So he sent him some of the uh, best students in Or Sameach. And Rav Simcha Wasserman the next day was upset. He said, why did you send me the best students? I... I wanted to uh, learn with the, just the beginners. I wanted to learn Gemara with them, Talmud. So he says, uh, Rabbi Feldman said, well, why do you want to learn with the beginner students? He said, because I want a part of that, the fact that when you learn Torah with somebody, he has a desire to get closer to Hashem, and that helps ma- make people take on more and become more religious. So uh, Rabbi Feldman said, how does it work? He said, I don't know, but it works. Right? There's a certain aspect of Torah. It's, uh, it's like a Gezer HaKasav. There's There is a certain spiritual element in Torah that makes a person want to get close to Hashem. But after that, Rabbi Feldman did say, uh, I think, a reason why, an aspect of it. One is that when we do something with our mind, and we're totally involved with our mind, that our whole being is involved in it, right? When you do an action, your mind could be elsewhere. But when you do something with your mind and with your brain, your whole being is like totally enveloped in it. So what is Torah? Torah is the Das of Hashem. It's what God wants. That's God's will. This is what God told us. So now you're taking your mind and your whole being is subsumed in what God wants. So that could be part of the reason why Torah learning is, um, is so powerful. Also, when you learn Torah, you come in contact with the integrity of the sages. I mean, where else do you find, um, you know, you'll have rabbis arguing for three pages, bringing proofs and proofs and this and that. And then at the end, the rabbi will say, uh, oh, I'm wrong. No, you're right. How often do you see that? Or you can come to the, uh, you can come to the kolol and, and check it out of the kolol. Hear the kolol. There you'll have two rabbis arguing for a very long time. And at the end, a rabbi will say, yep, you're, you're right, I'm wrong. Right? When do you find that in politics? Right? Sometimes you have people, they're debating, and they, uh, they just want to prove the other one's wrong. But when you're learning Torah, you're debating because you want to find out what the truth of Torah is. You want to see, what does Hashem want from me? So, of course, if you realize you're wrong, you're going to admit you're wrong. It's a tremendous honesty that you see in the sages. You see it throughout the Gemara, and you see our entire tradition 
our entire, an entire Masorah, it's just a tradition of honesty of people who want to know what God wants from us. And you don't have that. Coming in contact with that is also uh, very powerful. Right, it says also, and the more that we, the more that we're involved in learning Torah, when we, the harder we work, the more it's matir has, the more it purifies us. Right, it says it compares learning Torah like a mikvah, that uh, learning Torah purifies a person. But just like a mikvah, if one, if you go into a mikvah and one hair is out of the mikvah, you don't become purified. So too by Torah, you have to be totally involved. Um, so everyone should come to the kol here, the kol on uh, Genesee, and uh, you could see firsthand. Uh, Torah learning and participate in the uh, Torah learning. But also, besides that, besides all the spiritual elements of Torah learning, it's a practical thing. We have to learn Torah because we have to know what to do, right? How can we keep Shabbos if we don't know what the 39 forbidden labors are on Shabbos or how to make Kiddush or how to do other things? So there's the spiritual element of learning Torah purifies us and it, uh, it, uh, it weakens the Yitzhahar. And there's also the practical aspect of learning Torah that uh, we have to know what to do, how to serve Hashem. Okay, let's finish this uh, paragraph. Okay. And it's what it's Repinchas Ben Yair again. This whole book is based on the Brisa where it lists the steps of how to come close to Hashem. And the first step is uh, is Torah study. But specifically, so that's the general way. The general way to get to being careful in serving Hashem. Is to uh, is to learn Torah, but the specific way is through again contemplation, sitting and thinking, sitting and thinking about the seriousness of the service of Hashem that we are required to do. And the way that we do this is by learning Musa. We learn, we study the sayings of the sages that come out of the uh, the Torah and the uh, the oral Torah. Right. That's really what. If you look at the Ramchal Sefer here, Masil Shasharm, it's really based. The whole Sefer, first of all, is based on the Brisa, the words of the sages, and he's bringing so many verses in the Torah and so many statements of the sages which are proving his point. That's really what studying Musr is. Musr, um, what we're doing now, we're learning how to uh, serve Hashem properly, that's through contemplation of these different sayings of the sages of what God wants from us. And right, we are in the, we are in the middle of this, uh, this court maze, and the sages, through the sayings and the verses in the Torah, the Ramchal is just organizing it for us very nicely, and much we, we wouldn't be able to do this without him. But it's all based, everything he's saying is based on what the sages told us over from the Mesorah, from Moshe Rabbeinu, that Hashem gave over, and it's our job to contemplate what we're learning, and to, uh, to make a, a real change, but it's all based on the Maimarim of, uh, of Chazal, of, of the sages. Any questions? Okay, stop here.